Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are discussing uh, Flat Earth. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Round Table. From the True Vine Brewing Company in Tyler, Texas. And uh, I don't know what the hell the ABV is on that. 5.2. 5.2. You found it. Good. Yes. Good. So, Round Table. I think that's an appropriate name for you're, a... You're uh, tickled by that, aren't you, John? I am. I am. That's why I picked it. An appropriate name for a discussion over Flat Earth. Yeah, we're going to... Uh, we've been converted and are going to convert all of our listeners. That, don't don't right. turn it off yet. <laughs> We're not serious. No, we we said it's cool. I mean, just turn it off. You can go go about your day now. Don't it's, don't do that. Oh Lord, Lord, Lord. Yeah. So, uh, is it just me or is flat Earth like everywhere right now? Uh, yeah, it, it's definitely getting more attention in the last couple of years. Um, I, I wonder if it's really... Thanks to Reddit. I wonder if there's really more flat earthers or you just have more... Ha, have them getting a, a louder voice. I, I I don't think that those two can exist in a vacuum. So I think there are susceptible people in the world who will believe things they come across. Uh, who would have believed maybe some other crazy or sensible thing had it come across... But with Flat Earth getting more attention, it necessarily drives more Flat Earthers. Now, the good news is that the kind of people that are just susceptible and kind of going to kind of go with the flow are not like the dedicated, devoted people who really are going to drive the movement. However, the bad news is it does give them a little bit of like a, a extra, pa- it's a power up for them, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, and you said something there about, <laughs> about, about people that, that are willing to believe strange things or something to that effect but uh you know there's there's a there is a there is a degree of logic to the flat earthers there really is they make it they make a logical argument yeah. you can make a logical argument and still be wrong that's what i'm is, is what i'm trying to get at but if you're basing your your understanding of the world on your personal observations i think there is a degree of logic to to how you get there which is why i could accept i could accept the idea of being believing a flat earth for generations and generations and generations but now everything that you have to discount in the modern era makes me wonder how do you get here yeah well and you know you mentioned logic and and i agree with you there is a, a bit of logic uh based on your as you say observations as a human but I think, and especially in the digital information age we're living in, while that logic exists based on facts X, Y, and Z, you really have to actively try to close your eyes to facts A, B, and C uh, in order to for X, Y, and Z not to look absurd. Does that make sense? I, I, yeah, but, but you know, let's kind of look at, 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 at I, I think we want to kind of look at the different beliefs here and, and see if we can figure out how they got there, don't we? Yeah. yeah. But uh, first things first, uh, <coughs> Anna, you kind of looked at this stuff. Is there a is there a standard belief on, on, on what the flat earth looks like? No. Not at all? No. No, some of them think that it's a disc. Some of them think that it is a disc of a specific size. Some of them think that it is kind of a an infinite plane. Um, some think that it's a dome. Some think that it is a disc set on pillars. Uh, some think that it's a disc on a turtle on elephants with elephants all the way down. That's the um, one I'm going with. Yeah. That's the one I'm going with. Um, is it elephants all the way down or turtles all the way down? Turtles all the way down. Elephants. It, well, then is it, it's on elephants on a turtle. That's what it is. Yeah. On elephants on a turtle. Oh, well, that's, that's just, turtles that, all the that's way down. just not acceptable at all. I, know. I was okay the other way. You know, well, it makes yeah. sense for the elephant to be on bottom, of but when course. you put the elephant on top of a turtle, I, elephants are always I no longer accept, I no longer accept it. So, yeah. uh, so all these different ideas, and you know, I, I I can really I can really understand how somebody can can look around and come up with the idea of a flat Earth. When I look out, it looks flat to me too. Uh, when I go out in the ocean, when I was I was a marine out there, it looks flat out there as well. You know, for as far as the eye can see, I understand this. And did you see how they explain uh, the the horizon here on the flat Earth? Did you, did, did you happen to catch that, John? I've seen quite a few different. You mean ex- the bending of light? 
Uh, well, no, the, I was actually thinking about, you know, there's the old argument that you can go out on the ocean. I've made the argument. We, we've all heard it before that that you can watch a ship go over the horizon and it goes over a little bit at a time. And the last thing is, the, you know, the top of the ship. That's proof of, you know, of, of, curvature, of the curve. yeah. the curvature of the earth. But their argument is and they'll show you video of, well, no, it's just going out of your eyesight. And if you have a telephoto lens, you can still see it. Well, but then why can't we see Paris from here? Well, at some at, at some point, at some place on the Earth's surface, if you could, uh, if, if it's flat, we should be able to see Mount Everest from, from anywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, and, you know, it, it's kind of an asinine argument to me. Um, hopefully I can pull a video clip of this and, and put it on the YouTube for, for people uh, on the final video. But uh, if not, you, you can Google this. I've seen videos of people with a telescopic lens watching sailboats move out. And at some point, actually, the the one I'm thinking of, it disappears into the fog eventually. But at the time it disappears into the fog, the water is up halfway up the sail. Yeah. And so, you know, honestly, in, in perfect clarity, uh, you know, any anyone who, who believes in a, you know, scientific earth and, and, and solar model... And who has looked at stars and can see stars their naked eye have to believe you can see pretty freaking far depending on how much light you have. Uh, so on a clear day, it shouldn't be a problem. Of course, you know, we know about smog and fog and, and all kinds of haze that, that can interfere with that. But even including those and saying because of all these things, uh, atmosphere in our way, I can look at that video and say... Well, either that ship was sinking very calmly as it left, or there's some curvature. Now, I've even heard, heard them argue that, of course, there's curvature, but it's kind of like a, a, a dinner plate where it's like kind of curved in, but it's not like it's concave instead of convex. Yeah, but but it's not it's not round. It's just kind of curved a little bit. But even if you if if you argue that, um, you know, it. it it starts to feel like you're having to bend your ideas around the existing model to explain existing phenomena um, to justify your idea. And and we'll get into some of the specifics here around these ideas. Um, but I guess one thing I, I, I'll go ahead and say that I like to say is some a lot of the arguments I hear around flat earth are not actually arguments for a flat earth. They're arguments against the round Earth. Yeah. So yeah. these pictures are photoshopped, or NASA's a lie, or we, we couldn't have gone to the moon, or whatever the argument is. And I would just like to say, let's let's say you're right. Let's say you're right about all of it. NASA's a hoax. We've never been to space. The space is a hoax. To whatever degree you want to say. I would love to see the flat earthers, mountains of evidence and photo proof and all this that NASA has to debunk, right? Because there are amounts of evidence for this round Earth that we can say is all a hoax, right? And even if we disprove all of that, it doesn't prove a flat Earth. We actually need mountains of evidence for the flat Earth that, that the NASA should be having to rebut constantly. And we just don't see it at nearly the same rate as we see the round earth. Yeah, they evidence. say things like water always finds its level, and if you pour water on a ball, it doesn't stick to it. Um, yeah, that's that, that. That's denying the gravity of the mass of the earth. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's that, and um, oh shit, I should have looked up the name of the thing where you have like a, a plate and you have a cup with water, or you have a bucket full of water, and you spin it in a circle, and the water sticks inside the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, that, it, it's acting that's not as Coriolis if effect. no, no. Um, but anyway, I can't remember what they call that. It's it's it's, it's acting as though a stationary, force, which yeah. is not a real force. Um, but it's a acting as if um, a stationary ball and a moving ball would act the same. Um, it, it on top of a number of other factors. Yeah, uh, they, they they also like to point out that uh, uh, well, not all, by 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 no means all. Uh, yeah, but but there are there is a a subgroup. And there's a bunch of subgroups, but there's it's, it's a subgroup of the flat earthers that believe gravity doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the justification I heard for this was clouds that uh, that that 
if if the Earth has a, has a, enough gravity to hold all of us on the Earth, how does water uh, stay up in the uh, in in the heavens and, and not fall? At which point, I would say, have you ever heard of rain? Uh, but uh, well, actually, you know, I, I'm going to give them you know a, a little bit of credit here on this because uh, rain and clouds are actually a pretty complicated uh, phenomena that we only recently kind of understood. So how? Rain should never happen. So if you look at the mathematical models of water vapor condensing into a droplet and falling, mm-hmm. there's a problem. So we, we talked a few shows ago about micro black holes and why they yep, would yep. instantly disappear. The same thing actually applies here. So there's a, a rate of loss in, in a water droplet, and there's a rate of gain. And those two ratios depend on the size of the water droplet. And for anything to start, it would lose, for a droplet of water, it would lose water faster than it gained water. A water droplet in the cloud should never form. You know what the workaround they finally figured out was? Of why water droplets actually form? What's that? At the center of every water droplet is a piece of dust. Yeah, well, that's not, that's not new. That's, that's what I was taught in elementary school. Right. But it, it gives the water droplets a critical mass to form sure. around, and, and then they form a water droplet. Yeah, that's, um, but that, that's exactly what, you know, the, which is actually an argument for gravitational force when you're talking about this. You've got something with a higher mass, and the lower mass objects gather around it. Right, but if, if you don't understand the principles of why water droplets should never form and why they do yeah. form, it could be a, 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 a quiet, vexing phenomenon of you got enough water up there that it is white or even dark colored. Like the sun can't yeah. even get through it and it's just hanging out of there. Yeah. Why is there so much water up there? Why isn't it just falling? And and, and that kind of makes sense to me until you understand the the, the <laughs> statistics. It, 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 it never made sense to me when I heard the argument because I – I remember learning from Miss Thistlebottom in second or third grade that that's how rain worked. And now, the argument some people would say is that the that the, the schools, the textbooks, and NASA are all uh, mass information. Can but, someone tell me why? Because I've never actually gotten, and and maybe you guys found somewhere. Why are they perpetuating this particular lie? The 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 argument goes back to uh, it got started because well, I guess. In the 1950s and 60s, we were in the middle of the space race. Mm-hmm. The idea was you had the Soviet Union and you had the U.S. that were in a race to see who could do this. And the argument is they began faking this, believing that uh, that they would one day be able to do this, but they needed to beat the other. So they, they created these fake fake space things, and they, they created this, this, this fake idea and sent it off. And then they discovered that that the earth is really flat, but now they're stuck with it because they've done all this fake stuff. So they're, they're, they're kind of stuck into this now. Well, and That's I've the even, theory I read. Uh, I've even heard uh, from some pretty prominent uh, sources on the flat earth, um, serious argument that the whole reason for this is a holy battle that's going on where the, the evil forces or the devil or demons or, or maybe pagans, who knows, um, are perpetuating this because it is a way to discount the Bible. It is also oh, a yeah, way to that. discount the the special place that God has made for Earth. And, and and what this all gets down to is them trying to perpetuate a lie that life could live on other planets. And by doing that, this is all this is all a war on the Bible. That that this is all a way to discount the 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 word of God and thereby convert people to evil. Yeah, that's that's just bizarre. An argument that somehow that, humans are special. Yeah, yes, or anybody is that, special. That seems uh, like like a like a real stretch for me on that one. Uh, so we've kind of talked about about water a little bit with uh, you know with with rain, but here here's my question. Did you have something else there? Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a really similar argument. And, and tell me if we need to go into what you're about to okay. say first. Uh, I've heard arguments of. If there isn't a dome, and we can get into to dome theory a little bit later. Yeah, we, we hadn't even, even introduced that idea yet. Why doesn't the atmosphere escape, which is really similar to why don't the clouds fall? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we want to talk about that now, or do you want to do uh, your thing? You no, know, but we can go ahead and talk about that. But let, let's introduce the dome theory first, okay. because they don't really uh, – it, it this isn't something that we've even, even gotten into. And, again, this is not a theory that's ex- accepted by uh, 
by all flat earthers, although it seems to be a, a, a prevalent. majority uh, or prevalent. We'll say yeah. I don't even know if majority, but a large percentage of them mm-hmm. seem to accept the idea that the Earth is a, a closed system. Is the word they like to use, which is an interesting um, because Bill Nye said that. It's an interesting yeah. theft of, an, of another concept that they were doing. Bill Nye was talking about a completely different concept when he said that. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, said uh, that it's a closed system, closed by the firmament, which is this dome uh, of, and some some people have it as a you know a solid dome, some have it as a, a you know water vapor dome, but there's this idea that there's something that closes off the atmosphere. So from that, what what did, what did you have with the sun and moon inside? Yeah, this which are most of the people that believe this believe the sun and moon are inside that, and approximately the same size as, as each mm-hmm. other yeah so so the question arose of you know we have pressure here on earth and there's a vacuum in space so, so say the the nasa liars right and if that's true why doesn't the whole earth decompress and the gas escape and then we had no atmosphere and then we all suffocate this, this i think we're all aware this doesn't happen right so what's the reasoning and if you point out to them gravitational forces keeping gases uh, inside, they'll say, fine, you can tell me gravity, but still, if there's a high pressure and a low pressure, and I, you know, I blow up a balloon and I pop it, the air, like, just, it rapidly escapes. Um, and I actually watched a, uh, a debate that was hosted between uh, science college students and flat earthers, where they kind of went at each other. And, and they, they tried to explain it by saying, well, it's a gradient. But I, the explanation, while it made sense to me, I don't think it resonated with your average person that doesn't have a really good background in physics. So I, I, I want to kind of take this from another angle and, and, and actually talk about oceans, right? So I don't think any flat earther would dispute. And if they would, then, then I, uh, I dare them to uh, go deep sea diving and come up real quick. That there is higher pressure in deep oceans than, you know, in your shallow, you know, swimming lake Sure, that's why, that's why you have the bends, yeah. Right, exactly. Um, and if you took a, a vessel full of liquid and pressurize it and then rapidly open it to regular atmosphere pressures, it will also rapidly decompress and squirt liquid everywhere if you want to ever see this in action buy a two liter of coke shake it up really good the uh, carbon dioxide will release it'll pressurize and you can open it up and see what happens uh, i would recommend outside unless you're a flat earther in which case i would recommend to the bedroom your asshole. you know um but uh you'll you'll then see the effects of when liquid is pressurized so i want to ask the same question if there's greater pressure in the ocean than there is in the air, and I think that that should be an easily agreed upon thing. Why doesn't the ocean just decompress into the air? And why is that? Why don't we have these plumes of, of 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 compressed water shooting up into the air until pressure equalizes? Um, and this really gets into that that gradient theory that was being discussed. So I think I think we can all agree that. Whatever the down reason is, I'm gonna call it down reason because you know these guys can't wrap their heads around gravity. Because gravity at least not is all too mainstream. Um, so whatever the down reason is, that heavier things fall down. I, I, I think we agree on this, and I think we agree that 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 air has some weight to it. Uh, if you ever doubt that, hey, there's then, some density to air. Yeah, put put a put a vacuum on on a container and watch it crush itself while the weight of air pushes in on it. I, pretty standard experiment you can do at home go pick up a full air tank and an empty air tank right exactly there's a way to that um and and the reason is that that gravity does have some effect on it right i mean i think we can all agree gravity has an effect on a a weight so i i want us to imagine a uh a situation in which we had a an empty container but there were, you know, maybe three molecules in it, three air molecules, right? And we drop those in. Where would those air molecules go? Um, I think we would probably see some kind of situation. They're going to bounce off each other and move around where there was maybe one air molecule in the top of the container, but two sat on the bottom because they're heavier, right? They, they kind of want to, you know, go toward the bottom um, where we're going to see, see a pressure differential. And we see that when we go to Mount Everest, there's not much pressure and it gets hard to breathe. 
Um, the, the gradient idea states that that gradient is continuous until the point where there are so few air molecules that the chance of escape is so low because they have, have very little pushing on them except for gravity. Uh, the reason that we actually see uh, explosive decompression of things is because you can imagine, you know the little chickens that like you squeeze them whenever you oh, let them go? Those are terrible. Yeah. If you took all those and bound them together with, with tape, right, and then pull the tape off, they would all suddenly want to go back to their natural state. Uh, the same, and they would bounce off each other. They would kind of, you know, as they went out. Uh, the same thing happens with air molecules. They bounce off each other like little bouncy balls, and they want to shoot out of this, like, little bundle that they've been condensed into. And the idea is the atmosphere gets so thin on the edge that there's nothing for them to really bounce off of. They're just kind of free-falling bouncy balls at that point, and just kind of stacked really loosely and lightly. And uh, so, I, I mean, does, does that seem like an intuitive gradient theory to you? Um, as someone who doesn't have a physics background? Yeah, it kind of makes sense to me, and, uh, and, yeah. and absolutely do not have a physics background. Yeah. Uh, never had a physics class in my life, isn't that really? so? Really? Really. Huh. Man, I went to high school back in the dark ages. We didn't have to do that stuff. So, uh, I may have gotten a little in the weeds there. No, Sorry. I, no, no I, I, think, I think it's a good explanation. But I want to talk about the, the, other, the other water problem to me. Okay. Okay. The argument is, uh, and, and you'll see them taking these balls and they pour the water on it and the water doesn't stay on the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is proof that, uh, that that gravity will not keep, water will not stick on a round surface. But then they argue that water will stay on a flat surface. But I can take that same, that, that same test to take a pitcher of water and go dump it on the kitchen table. It's a flat surface and that water is going to run off. It's not going to, 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 to sit up there. It's how, not really flat, Mike. How, how, do, how do you explain that? I, I, or how, do, how, do, how do flat earthers explain that? Well, I mean, the, the, there are a few different ways they like to, uh, they like to talk about it. Um, ice shelf is probably the most popular. Um, Let's get into that a little bit because, hey, the ice shelf is a fact. There is an ice shelf. Yes. Without a doubt, there is an ice shelf. So, uh, and, and I've seen pictures of the ice wall. Yeah. So, uh, so, so exactly what, what do, do, the, uh, do many of the flat earthers believe about the ice shelf? The so, Antarctic ice yeah, shelf. Yeah. So, so they believe that Antarctica is, is actually a, uh, a much larger area than it's portrayed on a map. And that it actually goes around the outer perimeter of the Earth. And these walls of ice hold the water in, and there's, I don't know, magic beyond those. There's various <laughs> theories on what, what's going on there. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, but, if you're trying to get a vision of this, <laughs> uh, they, many of these people support what we call the azimuthal pr projection of the Earth. It's what uh, the United Nations uses on their, their symbol. It's just a view of the Earth from the North Pole, okay? Mm -hmm. And, it's, and it's, it's, it's a flat representation of a round Earth. But they have taken this, this concept and they have taken Antarctica from the South Pole and stretched it all the way around the perimeter of this. Mm -hmm. And the argument is that Earth is like a giant vessel that's holding this water with this, this ice wall around. Am I understanding that correctly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, what's the problem with that argument? That sounds reasonable to me. Um, it's bullshit. Well, <laughs> The, the, the hole that I throw into it immediately is that ice is frozen water. Right. So how did what kept the water in before the ice? God. It was made that way. It was made that way. Okay. M m much like a, a Lady Gaga song. Mm -hmm. It was born this way. Born this born way. This, yes, born this way. Yeah. But it's an, it, it, it's it, to me this is this is one of those arguments that that I can't even even comprehend. And to justify this, you'll hear the 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 logistical gymnastics you have to go through for this. Uh, you have to, first off, you have to visualize that, that the Earth is a magnet and the North Pole is in, the Northern Pole is in the middle and the Southern Pole is all the way around the outside. That's possible. It's like speaker, it's like speaker magnets, right? No, I mean, it, it really isn't. It, isn't it, that what speaker magnets are, though? No, Essentially no. the center and, center and outside? No, not at all. In fact, it's a, it's a round magnetic surface and... One side is positive and one side is negative. 
Up and down. So like a cylinder, like okay. the, the two flat top and bottom. And this actually hints at, at an interesting thing that uh, physicists have been trying to discover for years. And, and, and they've, they've all but ruled it out. So if they can prove this, um, or maybe, you know, assess their, their theory, and, and there's some alternate models that maybe could explain it, uh, that'd be great. They could actually get two scientific discoveries at once. And that's what's called a magnetic monopole. So the idea here is that magnets always have two sides, a north and a south side. You can't have a magnet that is only positive, another magnet that is only negative, yeah. and like that way on all sides. So what you would either have to have is a very odd-shaped magnet that's maybe like a, a bowl with a spout in the middle. With all the positive here, and then it goes like maybe under the earth and comes out, and all the negatives on the outside, or maybe so like the donut theory, yeah, Ma- yeah. Maybe, the shape yeah. of the earth, yeah. maybe or maybe you have a cylindrical magnet in the middle, and on the other side of of the flat earth, it's negative, but then around the outside you have like a ring magnet. And the bottom is positive. Maybe you could have that model. But the idea of just positive being over here and negative being over here unattached to each other, uh, you're going to have to show me the uh, the uh, magnetic monopole. I, okay. I need to see one of those nope. before I can buy your Well, theory. the argument that I saw was that to visualize it as if there was a, um, a pole in the middle or something, and that's your north and your outside is the south. Now, again... That's that's weird to me, but it's 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 the model that I saw. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, the, so so on this map, what you're looking at is instead of uh, you know traditional on a globe, north being up and south being down. North is in the middle, and south is the whole outside perimeter of of, of, of the Earth. Yeah. Oh, um, by the way, yeah. if, if if you ever do find the magnetic monopole, the way you can test it is. So you know how you can take magnets and they stick together and one thing you turn around, they don't stick together? You should have two magnets that stick together in any configuration. If you can ever find those two magnets, talk to me. Yeah. We'll make money. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and yeah, contact us. So Yeah, we're the ones they're gonna contact. Now, oh yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm I'm interested. But uh all right, so I'm looking at this at, at this this map here, this uh as as the muffle project projection map. And my next question is how do you explain something as simple as circumnavigation with this? The i the the, the, Circum- the the fact that well well but how do you explain that you can continuously sail east and eventually end up back where you started from? They they were turning. I mean that that's our explanation is they were turning. They just didn't realize. I've heard because their compasses because the magnetics were off their calculations. Well, if were north off, is always in the middle. I guess east would always be perpendicular, clockwise. Yeah, and west would be counterclockwise. Yeah, yeah. Is, 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 is that how that works? I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm yes. trying to visualize this in my mind. Yeah. So, and and and, and that's their explanation. But but they're, they're trying to build rockets, which, by their own admission, rockets are hard. They think impossible. NASA thinks it's hard. But I don't think anyone is like rockets are easy, right? Here's a really easy one to test right because things circumnavigation trajectories near the south pole should be much longer trips yes than circumnavigation near the north pole so two ships traveling at about the same speed should circumnavigate the globe at mirrored latitudes at much different rates so they could just fund two expeditions Show that they're going at the same speed, and yet, and, and and there's many ways to do this. Some as simple as dropping a rope and counting the knots as they go by, right? And yet, they should not arrive at near the same time. That would be a much cheaper thing than going to space by anyone's admittance. But for some reason, I haven't really seen much attention to this, uh, uh, this, you if, know, if method then. If you could just hit the ice wall and sail around it and get back to where you are, doesn't that prove it too? Oh no, because I mean you're going. No, out, you know, no because if you look at the it's globe, so vast. Yeah. it's so vast. Well, even still, if you look at the globe, I mean, you put a flag on this part and you f- sail around back to where you're at. So, but it but should it, be but, a but really that would prove long that it's trip. It's not a wall on the outside. It should be a really you went long around trip. It. 
Well, I mean, you could be going. No, no, no. no. I mean, it would be on your right the whole time, either way. Okay. It doesn't actually prove That's anything. Freaking bizarre. But it, it, it should bizarre. not be a quick trip. It should not be a quick trip. Well, Antarctica is really big. Well, I mean, yeah. <gasps> Did y'all hear about Andrea Barnes? No, I have not. Okay. No. This woman who was, like, obsessed with the idea that the Earth was flat from, like, 1904, I think it was, until she died in 1961, um, left home at the age of 16 with a pair of borrowed skis to go to Antarctica and find the ice wall and and prove that it existed, uh, failed because everything was against her. Went back home, uh, went, if I remember correctly, went back to Antarctica in 1929, um, had some sort of, uh, God, I should have, I should have written down the details of this, um, had some sort of mild success, but, but not, um, she didn't actually find the ice wall. And then her, um, the successes that she did have were overshadowed by the, uh, collapse of the stock market in the U.S., um, and then in 1961, she went back to Antarctica, took a, she had like a, a, a crew that went with her and they ran across some, uh, bad weather and they weren't going to be able to go out. And she apparently like in the middle of the night just said, fuck it, got the snowmobile and started riding out to find the ice wall. And the thing that the flat earthers are now claiming is that in 1990 or 89, um, there was an expedition to Antarctica and they were out exploring and somebody found a partially covered uh, snowmobile and that there was no body anywhere near it to be found. But there was there was a camera uh, whose pictures had all been taken and a a little strip of paper with a note on it that said something along the lines of um i've finally proven it the whole world is going to have to admit that that you know i was right and uh, supposedly according to them the uh explorer who found the camera inadvertently opened it up and exposed all of the pictures and so we don't actually have ah, all proof yeah, yeah, that's, of that's, what she found man so that's that's unfortunate I, uh, it is it is because, uh, because i was and one really I, convenient I was right there i was right there uh, i was, oh, one it was strip, signed andrea barnes i was one strip of film away i, am I know you. Yeah, but I, then we, they we exposed right it oh uh, he, here's something i, I wonder fucking globularists yeah yeah Here's here's something I wonder, right? So as commercial and hopefully pedestrian space flight becomes a more viable option, uh, you know that there there are GoFundmes to build rockets and everything. Yeah. Whenever they do finally get their hands on a rocket and they're going up to prove how wrong everyone is, here's my big question: Will they bring oxygen tanks? Like, how strong is their conviction about this belief? That's a good point. That's a good point. Um... I mean, if they really believe in the doom theory, you shouldn't need those pesky oxygen tanks. You can save weight and save fuel. Have you seen the the movie, the the the, the film footage from I forgot in the nineteen forties or fifties that purports to be launching rockets and, and and watching them run into the dome and, and explode in the sky? That's Mm-mm. that's that's amazing. I haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, there's it, it, it purports. You see these these going and they just blow up and they're like. Mm. Things don't just blow up. It hits something. It's a what? <laughs> yeah. Is that well, what happened to? Was it Challenger back in like it, the early two thousands? It, 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 it hit the dome. The firmaments must yeah. have been what happened. So, uh, but here's my question, right? If they can hit the dome with a rocket, if that's a thing that can happen right now, why can't they shoot something and hit the moon? Like that should be a, yeah, because the moon's closer. That should be a display yeah. that and, we and can all sun. see. Yeah. yeah, and nobody could deny they they could put a mark on the moon and say, yep. That's the mark that proved flat Earth, <laughs> right there. Amazing, yeah. amazing stuff. Um, the, the the other thing I want to talk about with the poll, though, is and and this is part of the one of the things that that people that that support conspiracy theories need is they need um, they need at least the appearance of a cover up sometimes. Right. And I think the Antarctic Treaty in the nineteen fifties 
gave them th- them that uh, where yeah. where the where many of the nations of the world got together uh, after Admiral all Byrd, the capable nations of the world yeah, after Admiral Byrd had gone through and 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 explored parts of Antarctica. Uh, They'd gotten together and said, okay, we've looked at this. Now nobody else can. You can only go on uh, scientific expeditions. And the logic was that this has to, this has to be saved. This has to be preserved as one of those last places on earth. Um, and th- you've got these, these flat earthers that look at it that, that support the, the wall. They go, well, isn't that convenient? Yeah. They went down there, looked at it, and then they said, but so now, is your camera but theory. Now, now nobody else can. Nobody else can. Right. Uh, so I, I at least wanted to address that there's 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 that aspect there. Well, and, and let me take a moment and agree with them. It's convenient, and I think it's personally dumb. Um, I don't I don't like it, but I I think it's a leap to go from that all the way to ice wall. Ice wall. Earth is flat. All that. Now, well, and, and this idea that, well, nobody can go to Antarctica is is a bullshit one. No, they go all the time. Uh, yeah, people go all the time. It It is not that diff- – it's far easier to go to Antarctica on an expedition um, than it is to, you know, build your own rocket and ship it to space or whatever. Well, and, but, you, but, even or though, not space. but even those expeditions are, are going to <laughs> – the edges of Antarctica. They're not. They're not going deep into that, or, uh, or don't appear to be. Yeah. Well, and and, and most of the, the 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 deeper travel is very small groups, very limited. The the kind of thing that if you want to do a cover up, that would be the thing. But but here's the the bigger problem with cover up, right? Um, there are people that deal with the globe all the time. Surveyors, yeah. rocket scientists. Uh, people who, Our flight who, mathematics yeah, are based yeah, on airline a, pilots. Yeah, globe. pilots. On and on and on. They all have to deal with the curvature, right? It's one thing to tell me that these small expeditions are covering something up. I mean, I, I need more than just they're covering something up because they're small, but fine. That's in the realm of thinkable to me. But that every pilot, rocket scientist, surveyor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, are all in on a global conspiracy. At that point, it's not a conspiracy anymore. Well, it's a practical joke, and the few of us who are left behind are the idiots, right? Yeah. And, and, and and all the guys that put the satellite dishes on your house would have to be on it, too, whenever they're aiming at satellites. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've, no, yeah. no, no, no. No, here's, here's the deal with satellites. Here's, here's the deal. They're just using the uh, antenna towers that you use for yourself. Yes, they're all aiming at 45 degrees at, at, at antennas. I saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, I guess the satellites have a little sensor in them, so if you pull, pull them off kilter, then... <laughs> they just fuck up, which again, the satellite companies have to be involved. They in. got to be in on it. You know, and and here's here's another one, right? I hear that the uh, the space station is a hoax. Yeah, it's clearly inside the dome because you can't get out. Right. What's holding it up? Like, what's it doing? Like, you can look through a telescope and see it. You can go home. You can buy a telescope. You can look at like a schedule and say, "Oh, it's going to be here," and see it. You can take a picture of it. You don't have to have a telescope. You can just look up on it. Yeah, but you can see it with some definition. It's a star, but you can see it's a space station. So, so now I gotta ask, like, okay, what's uh, what's holding it up there? Like, uh, the do they so the telescopes have they're they're, they've actually got like a a (laughs) video that comes across and Mm -hmm. it's synced to the NASA schedule of the space station and when you put it in the right no, place let, 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 it shows you the video at the right time let's go with let's go with honest stuff here because that, that's that's too far out there i really think that you i think that? i think your telescope is actually seeing that space station i just think it's held up by piano wiring and being pulled across the sky oh, did they hang it off the dome yeah, Does the dome rotate, and that's what it's like. Kind of a, like it's on a fan. Like there's actually like an upside down train track, kind of like a the little tracks that you would see powered. in like toy stores. Steam and stuff. powered, yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. Uh, the, By the clouds. The, yeah, they, that's why they're there. Yeah, that's that makes, what the clouds are it's, for. It's not clouds; it's smoke from the steam powered locomotive. There weren't clouds yeah. until they decided to put up uh, the space station. Hashtag chemtrails. The, uh, oh. the here's the other side of that is that that. The, um, the the size of the cover-up that would have to be there and the cooperation, you have to be willing to accept that not just our government, but all governments are going to be effective and competent enough to do this. 
Well, and uh, these same people anything, believe quite. the New World Order. Um, and and the thing about it is, like, there still is not a a feasible reason why in all of that. Like, not only would every country, every government, and tons and tons of civilians have to be in on this cover-up, but there still is not a a good explanation of why. You can say that it is to uh, circumvent belief in... But why? Why this? Why the shape of our world? Because they're devil worshippers. But the thing about it, like, this idea is so... First of all, there are a million other ways that you could... uh, control people other than the shape of the world um no there aren't not the this shape the only of the world one. is the fundamental one to all the other lives oh, this and back masking on albums those are the two ways you yes do it. yes um but, but nobody uses albums anymore, why are so. they still trying to fight it there are literally like i do somewhere between 500 as reported by the uh international flat earth society as of 2017 members of this organization to as many as 3,500 in the 1960s, right before the guy who was running its house burned down and all of the records of their membership was, that was lost. That was convenient. It's I, very convenient. I, I so think, somewhere between 500 and 3,500 people that actually believe this, you lost. You fucking lost. Well, you're, you know, you're, it's, it's such I, an old argument when you realize that, you know, the first globes that we've, that we've got on record Greece. Well, well, well. Before the second century BC, we've seen we, we've seen things similar. Now they didn't have the whole Earth, but they had like Africa on a globe. They had all so the land the, they were aware of. Yeah. So the idea <coughs> has been there for a long time. The Greeks had it. Uh, the ancient Hebrews, I mean, uh, uh, had the idea. And yet the flat earthers will claim that we've only that the earliest known globe that we had was four, yeah 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 which is ridiculous we can it's we can look at completely we can look asinine at, i, can I guess all pictures, of those are fake too can see pictures of them they're the, here they're photoshopped by the way you know that that statue of hercules holding up a disc like a, a serving tray yeah and yeah, yeah. yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. it's got to be fake hey i want to talk about this beer and then i want to talk about uh the idea of day and night and seasons a little bit so, sounds good but but i do want to say and i think your your membership numbers are a little bit off when you were talking about it um i've looked into this a little bit and the flat earth movement is growing and you just said there are less people now than there were but that's because he had all of the membership records in his house and then someone set fire to his house figured out the problem Flat Earthers are too dumb to re re, re uh, uh, of their membership. That, that that's what it is. Uh, yeah, they, they, they lost all their contact information, so they couldn't say, "Hey, guys." They they no, they were they were up. they they were trying to prove it, and they fell off the end. Yeah, what was I think they're the only ones falling off the edge yeah, of the earth. Yeah. Really. Uh, all right, hey, them and Amelia Earhart. This beer is. How round. has that not been part of their thing? Anyway, go ahead. This beer is Round Table from the True Vine Brewing Company in Tyler, Texas. Uh, we've had a few True Vine beers before, and. Um, I, I don't know who wants to start, but I kind of think this is going to come down around where True Vine beers come down. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Yep. So I, when I first um, got this, was completely ready to tear into them. First of all, it's True Vine. And True Vine is, you know, not great beer. Second of all, we got a six pack. And one of the cans <laughs> went properly sealed. It's half empty. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Cosmo, can you hand me the, the beer sitting on the table over here? I want to I wanna show this. Hear this? This is an open can. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I am crushing an unopened <laughs> can here. That is because it is half empty because, yeah, they did a crap job. You can open it and drink the rest of the and flat beer. You, and it's not even like it poked a hole. You can see here on the edge where the beer started seeping out from, from a bad seal job. Well, this so. is, a, you know, True Vine is just half an hour down the road, so I want yeah. you to take that back to them. Yeah, right. I don't. No, um, <laughs> I don't want to go in there. But that said, I, I gotta, I, I gotta be honest about the beer, and this is <coughs> better than anything else I've had from them. Um, so this is an amber pub ale, you know. And honestly, it's not a bad amber pub pub ale. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right down the middle and say a two five, which really? is a, a great rating a for a true vine. Two five? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a bad beer. Unfortunately, I was ready to okay. tear into them once again. Okay. You and uh, me. I'm giving it a 2.3. Um, I've already finished mine. Yep. Um, was it half empty? 
No, <laughs> yeah, it was full. Start off it was full. Um, so I've already finished mine. It is very easy to drink. The flavor is beer. It's 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 beer. Um, it's got a little bit more body than um, than I think your than most people than what most people are drinking. Am I drinking um, the same beer? Which I like. It's still very light, um, but I'm saying it's got more body than an, an industrial lager. I think you can agree with that. Um, okay, maybe. So um, it, it's easy to drink, but there's nothing particularly special about it. Um, I'll drink this if it's handed to me. I'm not ordering this anywhere um, if I see it, but I do think that it is the best um, true vine beer we've ever had. Uh, so I give it a two, three. Two, three. I, I, I don't really understand the, the, these ratings. Um, I think it's a typical true vine beer. I think it's, uh, you know, it's adequate. I don't think it's, I don't think it's good. I think it's an adequate beer. If you, ha- which to, is what, why what I give it said, a two, three. What you said, if somebody handed it to me, I drink it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn it down, but I'm not gonna go look for this beer. If I see this beer again, I'm not gonna buy it. It's just not. There, there's literally nothing special about it. To me, it it, it tastes like a production beer to me, um, which is you know, it's not what it's not what it a, tastes a, a, like. A, kind of a light shiner. No, I, I think shiner's ten times the beer this is, and uh, I just. But um, if you watered down shiner some. Well, well, okay. So it tastes like watered down good beer. Um, that's that's not a that's Shiner. not a good beer to me at all. I like Shiner, so I I I, I want something a little. This is not as, as heavy. It's not. It doesn't have that that Oops. fullness that I like. We got Shiner in the uh, fridge when you're done with it. But uh, <laughs> I would go. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's terrible, but it's. It, I don't think it reaches the two level. I'm going to go one nine. Okay. Uh, just not just not anything real special. So uh, and interestingly, the can is ugly as hell. Well, yeah, that is true. Yeah. That is so interestingly. Um, we had. Giant Slayer by them that got a one overall rating and um, had Sanctimonium that got an overall 2.3. Okay. So this is actually in between those two. Wow. Yeah, interestingly. I, I, I didn't think Sanctimonium did that well, so uh, I don't really remember it that much. Fuck date uh, lawnmower. This is not going to be memorable enough to do anything um, uh, unless you are on a date with somebody who loves craft beers and you bring this to them as some sort of treat and they... We'll probably walk out on you. So the date for this, this is going to be the date when you're stuck in Tyler and ETX is closed. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> when the other microbrewery is not there, yes. you go to this one. Okay. Exactly. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's an okay lawnmower beer, I guess. It's light enough. You could drink a lot of it in the heat of the day. I think it would uh, quench your thirst. But uh, I, I don't think I'd enjoy drinking it. While mowing the lawn, I'm, I'm going to say also if Commerce Street's closed because it's worth the trip to, to yeah, not yeah. go to yeah. Tuba. So Commerce Street, ETX is closed. Or uh, uh, what was the really good one in Austin? <laughs> if you just if you got the choice, just go ahead and drive to Austin to what's that? Egg, Egbert's or what beer? Adelbert's. 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 Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. It, Anything. Um, and Rose City Draft House. Yep. Yeah, Rose City Draft House. <laughs> oh, there are lots too. of other options. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, oh, what was the uh, the other one? Uh, the gas station on the BJ's? corner of the loop. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, out on once, if you Athens. Athens. Yeah, oh, yeah. Athens. oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. If Athens closed. If all those are Gun closed. Gun Barrel City. Yeah. If yeah, all yeah. those are closed and you're stuck in, well, I guess you're stuck in Tyler. So you can't go the other one. Yeah. If you're stuck in Tyler, come get yourself some round table. Yeah. Or consider giving up drinking. Um, well, all right. So, option two. Kill let's, liquor instead. Let's talk a little bit about uh, about day and night on a, on a flat earth. This, this is something that, that's yeah. hard to comprehend. Uh, they, the, the belief is that the earth, I'm not sorry, that the moon and the sun are approximately the same size and they rotate opposite each other along the tropics, right? How do you explain day and night with that? Um, I don't. <laughs> so, well, how, 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 how do they explain it? Did, did, did y'all manage to understand this? Yeah. So the their idea is that the sun is spotlightish, um, and so it's kind of spotlight an area and and, the, and much smaller. So it would be a yeah, it would be like if you took a flashlight and we're and, and we're going over a table. Yeah. Right? So, same thing with the moon. Um, of course. Now you got to explain when you can see the moon and the sun. They also explain it just gets too far away to see. 
Uh, another weird one. Um, also, they say it goes in a spiral in and out between the uh, Tropic, Tropic of Capricorn Cancer and cancer, Tropic yeah. of Capricorn. Yeah. Uh, of course, now you've got to explain why it speeds up when it gets to the outer one. That'd be uh, Cancer, right? The lower one? Yeah. Yeah. So why, why, why it speeds up when it gets to Tropic of Cancer. Um, I mean... And in no way explains it to me. Also, another another fun sun one, right? The 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 sun's uh, uh, Coriolis, uh, Corina, Coriol, Corona, Corona. Yeah. That's the word. The sun, sun's Corona. This is something you can. I saw it recently during an eclipse, but you can. You know, there's other ways you can see it. You can see this Corona. It's huge. It's uh, it 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 goes out like twice the distance of the sun from the sun when you see it. And it looks like this, like, liquid dancing, you know, flame, right? Yeah, yeah. And the sun's a ball. Or at least a disc facing us. Yeah. Pick one. I don't care. One of the two. Where is all the uh, corona drippings from that, like, liquid? That's a good point. Like, what? That's a good point. And it's pretty close, so it it would just fall. Like, where is all that stuff going? Lava. I don't know. I'm just making. Have that you ever up. seen the lava rain? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm missing the lava rain all these years. Oh, uh, we're missing flat something. earthers. We're, contact we're, me and tell me where to go get the lava rain. I've I've uh, I've been missing it. Uh, the other the other the other thing they say is that the uh, uh, you know again as it moves between the Capricorn of Capricorn and Cancer, you get uh, summer in the northern hemisphere versus uh, uh I'm, I can't even get this out. Summer in the northern hemisphere and winter in the southern hemisphere. Right. And as it moves out, that that reverts, right? Right. Uh, I, I guess that that that's sort of explains a little bit of this. Hey, here's another thing: the summer in the southern hemisphere should always be cooler than the summer in the northern hemisphere because you have the same amount of energy concentrated in a smaller circle than a bigger one, right? So because it takes longer, it should be spread out over a longer distance. It should be cooler in the summer hemisphere during the Here's the other thing that that, that uh, if you're looking at the sun being much smaller uh, and the Earth being much much larger and, and, and the way this is moving, the further you get out there on the uh, on the disk, shouldn't your shouldn't shouldn't the time zones be different? Shouldn't it take longer for the sun to go around? Yeah, it, well, well, yeah. that's what that's where that's where I got to of why is yeah. it speeding up? It would have to speed up to keep up with the days, right? Yeah, uh, so that, that's kind of at least interesting for me to. Uh, to, to look at and, and the, the, and the even, gymnastics that go through here just amaze me. That's another one. You should have longer days on the northern hemisphere and longer nights on the southern hemisphere because it's the same size thing over a larger area. So show me the longer nights on the southern hemisphere. Also, uh, you got to explain those videos at the uh, North Pole with the sun just going and on the South yeah, Pole. Yeah, where you can see it. Right. The whole time, where you have, have, have days daylight for for weeks and months yeah 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 so. that, yeah, that, that doesn't explain that at all no. uh so it's it's it, it's kind of a, an interesting idea although i'm looking at this map and i can kind of see how the their, their, the sun the overlap would would leave it uh sunny on the north part for for a large part of time but i'm looking at the way this is going and it looks like the north pole would never get night uh <laughs> with, with, with this uh the other thing other problem i have with this is if the Earth is a disk, a, 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 a flat disk, a static disk, and you've got the sun and the moon rotating opposite each other, how do you get an eclipse? Yeah, how do you ever see the sun and the moon? Like, forget the eclipse. How do you ever see the sun and the moon at the same time? That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, but but you know, that, that whole eclipse thing is, is, a, is a kind of big deal to me because, uh, you know, at some point... The moon has to come between the sun and the earth for this. Yeah. Or 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 the earth has to come between the the moon and the sun, depending on what's. Maybe the government every once in a while takes a big paper disc and flies up there and is like, ah, cover it up. It's an eclipse. The other thing is, how do we? How do you explain uh, uh, the phases of the moon with this? Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea. I've not seen any kind of. Maybe the moon just naturally has a. I don't know. Well, they, they do argue. They do argue that the moon is not a reflector; that it produces its own its own yeah, light. Yes. So uh, I, I guess they turn off part of the lights to get the. It's uh, on a cycle to save power. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's what it is. The eclipse is the sun's cool down cycle. Oh, I love it's, it. It's, it's got to cool down every once in a while. On a, it's on a cycle. Oh Lord, help me! And what the corona is 
Uh, that that's just all the heat leaving where it's cooling down for a second. Get with the program. Okay, but it doesn't ever go completely dark. Well, it's just, you, you ever turn off an incandescent light bulb and it just kind of glows for a little glow while? For a yeah, little yeah, while. yeah, but eventually yeah. it goes completely dark. Well, well you, you don't you, turn it you, off that you long. You turn it back on before that exactly. happens. Exactly. <laughs> I see. The switch is on the is is on the uh, ice shelf. There's a spot. <laughs> you, they got a switch. And they got every once in a while they got to turn it off just to let it cool oh, for I, a second. I I, I hate why to, to uh, cool it. Why? So it didn't get too hot. Why? Have you ever been where it's too hot? It's not nice. It's not but we're not there. You don't want to melt the ice shelf. Yes. But it's not there either. It, it, I, I don't know. I don't know. I've seen... I've seen. The, Didn't God make it perfect? Uh, that's why he put the switch in there. He put a perfect switch right, to perfect cool... Switch. If perfect God made it perfect, it wouldn't need a cool down <laughs> period. An all-powerful God and an all-knowing uh, all God cannot be understood by a fallible man. Mm-mm. But a fallible one can. That's true. Okay, so which I wanna, is why you don't understand. I want to get back to this. Uh, I, I kind of want to change I'm perfect. a little bit because you're not perfect, and they are, so you don't get it. No, no, no. no. I'm saying and God was falli- fallible. Yeah, but I'm saying he's not, and that's why you don't get it. Anyway, but he is fallible, clearly, because he would have made a son that didn't need a power. I'm on your off. side. I'm on your side. That's a shocker. Yeah, yeah. Just, just. I was told earlier I needed to be on your side more, so I'm, I'm helping out. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, just like uh, I told that bitch who voted. With me because I had a vagina. I don't need you on my side. I will be right all by myself. Voted with you because you had a vagina. I like that. That's a, that's a, that should be your campaign slogan next time. Yeah. She vote, said us women have to Anna, stick together. I have, a, I have a vagina. Yeah. yeah. All right. I want to talk about this idea that uh, um, that all pictures of the earth from space are CGI. Uh, or Photoshop. Photoshopped. Or, you know. And they, they keep using this quote from a... Uh, um, I've forgotten what his name was, but he was a, he was at NASA, and he said, of, "You know, of course they're photoshopped; they, they have, have to be." be. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to hear the rest of that quote because I, I think I think that I think he's got kind of got a point. All space photos are uh, are photoshopped to an extent. They're all you've got to put something there for us to be able to understand the majesty of something. Um, and you know, they they keep showing these pictures and and. You know, this, this photograph of Earth from space in 1991 doesn't look like the Earth from space in 2014. Well, Photoshop's better. Cameras are better, you know. Uh, how, 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 do you, uh, how do you respond to somebody that says they're all Photoshopped? You know, and, and there is a long list of these arguments that, that I can, we can go through. And I, I kind of have a similar answer to all of them. Okay, let's say you're right. They're all photoshopped and it's faked. That is in no way evidence for your theory. Disproving your opponent's idea does not prove yours. So again, this gets back to my mountain of evidence idea. Okay, there's mountains of evidence that have all been faked for the round earth. Where's the mountains of evidence for the flat earth, though? Why isn't the actual thing that you say exists got its own mountains of evidence that can, that can, after we flatten this empire of lies, that we can put in its place? Because I'm not seeing it. I'm just seeing that you're attacking the, the mountains of evidence that exist, which in no way helps you build your own mountain. That's a good point. But is, is the fact that, 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 that NASA is willing to admit that some of these are Photoshop. Is that a problem? I'm just saying, just because I, I go to, to a, a photo studio and I have my family photo photoshopped, does in no way mean my family doesn't exist. I, so, I don't care. Okay, that's, that's kind of where you I know? came from. I just wanted to hear somebody else's opinion on that. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, to me, you, you clean things up. You don't, put yeah. out, you don't put out a bad product. You clean yeah. it up. And honestly, sometimes <coughs> a Photoshop picture... <laughs> is more real than the real picture because if you've, you've ever been on, a, on vacation you see that beautiful vista and you take a picture of it and then you come home and go you'll hear it all the time vacation you they should don't have do been it there it doesn't do it just it looks yeah. so much better in reality yeah. well that that photoshopping can kind of put that in there and i think that's what's going and capture, on capture encapsulate the experience instead yeah. of just the light that was present yeah, yeah yeah not to mention that it's got to be really hard to take a picture from you know Space. That's that, that. That's a good picture. Well, and and a lot of these images, you know, some of them are, and in fact, some video of like the ISS looking out the window is just raw video. 
But some of these images are not actually what you would consider a camera taking a picture. It's satellite data in the infrared and ultraviolet spectrums that they're compositing to yeah. make these images. Well, and a lot of the Earth pictures are, are composites of a bunch of pictures. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, uh, well, part of the problem with a, a, a spherical Earth is you can't get it all in one photo. Yeah. But, uh, but so they're taking this and they're making recreations. I mean, it is no different than when they make a, a picture of a black hole or, or what a star looks like or another yeah. planet. They didn't send a camera out there. It's, it's like really far away, like so far away that, you know, you couldn't hit it with a rocket or something. Just, you know, just to well, give you perspective. Of course you can't. You can't get through the firmament. So, well, I'm yeah. saying you can hit the firmament with a rocket, so it's yeah. further. It's further than the firmament. It's gotcha. further than the firmament. All right. So I, I think we've kind of, did y'all have something else? Because I think we've kind of beat this topic down pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I want to talk for just a little bit about kind of the, the, the ways, I, I think this is probably prevalent in ways that we don't realize. I'll give you an example, and, and I, I think she may even be a listener of ours, so uh, sorry if I'm calling you out. I have actually one of a, a very influential teacher of mine uh, throughout grade school and high school is a flat earther right now. Yeah, yeah, you've, I've, heard, I've heard this story. Yeah. This is- this is shocking to me. I also know some other people who, while they don't go around saying it, who are flat earthers. Or, or uh, I, I have a friend who, who I have a lot of respect for, and she's a young earther. She's not a flat earther, but she's a young earther. And I know a lot of young earthers. Yeah. yeah and uh, I had a discussion with a pastor friend of mine the other day about, about young earth. Yeah, and it's just, it's, it's mind-boggling to me that... Now, granted, these people are not the movers and shakers of the world. But how people what? can fall into this, you know, the, the psychology of being able to, like, hear something that is, that, that's convenient to your existing beliefs. Because let's be honest, that's what it is here. It was convenient to an existing belief of theirs. Uh, and then just kind of say, huh. And throw your arms up in the air and and block out the rest of the world. Like yeah, you find one that- piece of evidence that supports you, your 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 preconceived notion. You go up. Oh, I've got proof. It's true. Yeah. And and why do people want to live like? I mean, I guess it's kind of the the old like Matrix speech of of like it's comfortable. Yeah, yeah I, yeah. I lived in the Matrix, but it was uh, you know I, I got to enjoy steak and I eat slop. So put me back in the Matrix. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. It's comfortable. I think. The, the, the same people that, that, you know, look at our government today and, 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 and believe that it's that we're really still a full republic, we're, you know, and don't, can't look at it and say that, you know, we're not. Things yeah. have changed. Yeah. Well, um, in, in looking at um, the, the various different flat earth societies, both over the last few hundred years, um, and the more recent ones, it seems clear to me they're not seeking information. They're seeking confirmation of something that they already believe. The vast majority of them um, believing that the Bible is the infallible word of God, that the Bible um, literally calls out that the earth is flat. Uh, many of them saying that the earth is flat and supported on four pillars. Um, with the firmament. Right, with the firmament. Um, pillars, if you're Christian, not elephants, yeah, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm just saying it, it, it says God sits upon the circle of the earth in, in the Old Testament. But yeah, circle, not sphere. Not sphere. In Hebrew, it's the same word. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... They're not seeking to find information. Um, they're seeking to con- confirm something that they already believe. Um, and the the people who are falling prey to this, I think, are doing the exact same thing that they um, that they accuse globularists of falling prey to is. An organization's attempt to control what it is that they believe. Um, this particular organization's goal is to 
force people to continue to believe the Bible or to revert back to believing the Bible or to, uh, you know, convert from their heathen, heathenistic ways, um, because they've come up with this scientific proof that the Bible is accurate. Um, and that's what Flat Earth is. Flat Earth is a propaganda machine for fundamentalist Christians um, who have given up on faith. Well, and, and you know, that that's a real interesting point to bring that up because I've found two Flat Earth messages, right? Two, two dialogues you get. So if you start searching... The, the web for proof of flat earth. If you search in a manner that you would if you were a skeptic, you start seeing these arguments that kind of like s- try to sound like science for flat earth. Yeah. The minute you s- change the verbiage of your search and look for their internal stuff, search like you believe it. Oh, you could find... Yeah, yeah. Now it starts to become... The fundamentalist Christian machine. I mean, you literally see arguments around. It says this in the Bible as like a, its own like. Yeah, I, 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 I've seen a lot that are that are of these that are not Christians. Though there's a there are there are many of these that 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 are that's not a religious reason for them too. Um, and but I'm saying I think that's the root of it. I don't know that it is. I I I think I think. Uh, I think the root of it is that when you look around and you trust your own senses, things look flat. Uh, I mean, I, I think there, there's just trust what you see. And you know what I would like to see? Numbers on if there's more flat earthers in like Kansas than there are in like, you know. <laughs> that would be well, hilarious. Uh, well, in, 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 in different countries, where are they? You know, right, uh, right. You run into this issue where, uh, where, where so much of so much of the internet is is European. You know, at least that, w- that we can understand. So I'd like to I'd like to know China. You know what what's going on there? Where where until the 1950s they they taught in schools that uh, there was China, Greater China, and Lesser China, and the Earth revolved around China, and the universe revolved around the Earth. You know. Um, what do they believe now? I, I'd like yeah. to know that. Uh, so I, I just don't know. I just don't know. Uh, but it's it 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 puzzles my mind how much I see this and how many otherwise seemingly intelligent people can accept it. Um, yeah. Of course, you know, uh, it, it is that is that different than you know? I believe in angels or I believe in Santa Claus. I don't know. It's a uh, uh, or socialism or socialism, which is you know. I do believe in Santa Claus. Though. All right. So, I, uh, oh wow! I thought you were going to say something different. I should have known better, though. No, I do. I, I do believe in Santa Claus. So, all right, but uh, not the Easter Bunny. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, my, my my grandma never told me anything about the Easter Bunny. Right. But uh, but she did tell me that when you stop believing in Santa Claus, presents stop coming. And Mamaw's still alive. I still believe. So. Uh, do you still get presents? I still get presents. Oh, okay. Socks. Those need, are the best. I need socks, so yeah. it all kind of works out for me. All right. All right well, this we dead horse this is death? dead. Yes. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You can find us on social media by searching Six Pack Philosophy. Hit up our Teespring by searching the same thing there. Um, what, John? But before we go, uh, if there's anyone uh, right now listening on the live stream, we'll be back at three. three, three. And we're going to do a response video to these guys, uh, one of their videos. And we're just going to kind of go through it together. I don't think I've watched this one. I may have in my research. I've 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 watched at it. I have not yeah. just sat down and studied it, but I have I had it playing while I was doing other things. But uh, so this is going to be a video not just for our patrons, but for, for everybody. Everybody. Yeah. everybody. So if you're a YouTube subscriber, if you're listening to this when the podcast comes out, that video should be on our YouTube now. So you can go you can go check it out. Yeah. And if you want more uh, content, that's going to be either before everyone else gets it or. Uh, content that you may not get other places, uh, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Six Pack Philosophy. Do you want to wrap us up? Yeah, sure. Here we go. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 